The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 10109 in the name of Bob Doris on the regeneration of Royston. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And Mr Doris, if you are ready, if you'd like to open the debate, you have seven minutes or thereby, please. Okay. Thank you very much, President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to debate regeneration of Royston Parliament today. We'd like to welcome a number of local representatives from the, the Royston community to uh, the Chamber this, this afternoon. I hope fellow members and, and those through from Royston can, can join me in committee room six after this for some, for some refreshments. That, that would be most welcome. I, I wanted to bring this motion to debate today for two main reasons. First, I wanted the good work of the people and organisations in Royston to be recognised, and as we will hear, a very special year for many of them. And secondly, I want to draw to the Scottish Parliament's attention uh, the, the newly formed Royston Strategy Group, a community-led forum, uh, who would wish to see meaningful regeneration in an area where poverty is endured for, for too long. The Royston Strategy Group includes Rosemount Development Trust, Royston Youth Action and local housing associations to, to name but a few, including both myself and fellow MSP Patricia Ferguson sit on that group. Also, but can I place regeneration briefly in a historical context? Many still call Royston the, the Garn Gad. It was renamed Royston in the 1940s, more of a marketing ploy as part of the Glasgow Corporation's plans for housing action, eh, which rolled out over subsequent decades. That actually led to, to many in the 1950s moving away from Garn Gad to the new estates of the day. In 1953, Mick McLaughlin wrote the poem Farewell to Garngad, and he said, Oh, Father dear, and did you hear my new houses they have built? Some of them in Easter House and some in Castle Milk. Burlornock and Burnmullock too, they are building them like mad, and now they are taking our friends away from dear old Garngad. So that gives you maybe a, a poetic example of some of the problems faced over the years. More recently, however, it has been much more positive. In the past few decades, hundreds of rented homes or owner-occupied houses have been renovated or built anew in the area. Housing in Royston has improved dramatically, although there is still work to do, but it has improved dramatically in recent years. And The development plans of the likes of Block Cairn, Spireview and Copperworks Housing Associations are, have to take much of the credit for that. Local housing directors such as Michael Carberry and Fiona Murphy have not only spearheaded several development projects, but have been a visible face of housing and regeneration in the area. Tenant representatives such as Joan Royston and Charlie Lunn most certainly do ensure that that, that, that regeneration is directly community-led. Improving housing is obviously vital, presiding officer. However, the associations and others recognise that housing alone does not in itself improve life chances. Because of concern for poverty and high unemployment rates, the Rosemount Development Trust was created in 1989 by Royston residents, and by 1993, the local Millbourne Burn Centre was refurbished and ready to use for tenants. The goal to reduce unemployment rates and aid the fight against poverty. And just six years later, it completed new premises at Rosemount Workspace, opening and providing more jobs and opportunity. Maureen Flynn is a representation of what ambition and desire to serve. Uh, is Maureen was raised in Royston and has been involved with Rosemount for 24 years now. Maureen directly benefited by finding employment via the organisation and has supported many others to do likewise. Maureen Flynn is now director of this organisation and is doing a marvellous marvellous job advancing its reach and uh, accomplishing its worthwhile goals. Also making a significant contribution to regenerative efforts are a variety of other excellent organisations, and I will just list a, a few of them. So, Royston Youth Action, Toon Speak Young People's Theatre, Rosemount Lifelong Learning, the Flexi Centre, as, as well as local churches and schools. I very much hope that I have painted a vibrant picture of Royston, Presiding Officer, eh, because it is a vibrant place, as I am increasingly finding out. However, there is, of course, a much more challenging story. An estimated 26 per cent of the Royston population is receiving or is completely dependent on benefits. An estimated 24 per cent of the working age population are unemployed. Four out of the five data zones covering Royston are within the bottom 10 per cent in Scotland for educational attainment. Obtaining skills and further future education achievements is absolutely critical. The organisations I have mentioned earlier are aware of the scale of the problem and are busy putting into action approaches to deal with these challenges. 
I'm sure some others may talk about the Inspire Royston programme this year. That's just one example of engaging with all of Royston to celebrate the heritage, the community, but more importantly, to look at the future. So what can the, the Royston strategy group that I mentioned at the start, what can that achieve? Well, the first thing it can achieve is to listen to the community over what their priorities are, and it is doing that. Some of that work is already underway with a community consultation led by Community Links Scotland. They have spoken to many families over what they perceive to be local needs. One thing that is beginning to emerge is the potential need for a new community facility for older people in the area. Likewise, some have mentioned the lack of shopping opportunities, particularly for, for fresh fruit and veg, particularly around the, the Royston Hill area, which, as the name suggests, makes it particularly difficult for older residents to get around there. And transport links, the quality of them, have also been raised. Presiding officer, we can do much to address these issues, and Royston Regeneration Strategy Group has the goodwill of the City Council. Uh, and, and so much can be achieved when the City Council and the Scottish Government want to take action, and I think there's a joint responsibility there. That's why I very much said that whenever the Royston Regeneration Strategy Group comes forward with proposals and recommendations that the, 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 the local authority will hopefully back those, consider those, back those and take action to achieve them. But in doing so, so must the Scottish Government where opportunities to support that action can be done, and there are good examples of that. So, for example, joint work around getting over a million pound from Maryhill Borough Halls, where there was a joint action between the Council and between the Government to achieve over a million pounds for a new community centre in Codda, over a million pounds for a new water sports centre at Port Dundas, all in the North Glasgow, all with similar issues to Royston, all partnership work between a City Council and a Scottish Government. Now, one type of funding is the Regeneration Fund, a £25 million fund from the, the Scottish Government across Scotland. One possible pot of cash, that's where Cather Housing Association got its money from. But local authorities are asked to prioritise their bids in order of importance when bids go in. So I'd like to think in future years, when Glasgow City Council decides where it wishes the Scottish Government to prioritise, that Royston will feature with the highest priority on that. just want to finish off, presiding officer, by saying that any regeneration activity must be completely community-led, not the priorities of politicians, but the priorities of the local community. That is what the Royston Strategy Group hopes to achieve. And I think the legacy from this special year can be deep and meaningful and stretch for years uh, to come. I would like to hope that if Mick McLaughlin was writing his poem in the next few years rather than in 1953, he might call it the flourishing of the Garangad as opposed to farewell to Garangad. In closing, a community that is strengthened by investment led by their, by their own priorities, I have no illusions that that will deliver despite challenges. Royston, presiding officer, Garangad, presiding officer, is a vibrant community that needs help and assistance, and I'm sure with partnership working, we can all deliver. Many thanks. I now call on Patricia Ferguson to be followed by James Dornan. Four minutes or thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. May I thank Bob Doris for securing this debate about an important initiative in the Royston area of my Maryhill and Springburn constituency and for highlighting so many of the other good things happening in my constituency at the moment. The next two years are exciting ones for Royston, with the area's three housing associations, Spire View, Copperworks and Blockhaven, together with the Rosemount Development Trust, all celebrating 25 years of making a difference in their community. The famous Royston Spire, the area's most obvious landmark, will celebrate its 150th birthday next year and will not be forgotten in all the discussions about the future of the area. Now, each of the housing associations mentioned has contributed to the regeneration of the area, not just by building houses, but by building warm, affordable and attractive homes. Many of those local residents and volunteers who began the process of regeneration 25 years or so ago are, to their great credit, still involved, and we owe them and the staff who support them a real debt of gratitude. Similarly, Rosemount Development Trust 
has worked hard to preserve some notable buildings in the area and to provide premises to encourage businesses in, into Royston and employment opportunities for local people. While Royston Youth Action provides support and activity for young and not so young alike. There are, of course, many other organisations operating in the area, not to mention GHA and Toonspeak, of which I'm a patron, so I have an interest. The fact that all have significant anniversaries in the next few years has been the catalyst for some coordinated community celebration, as the motion describes, but has also spurred the organisations involved to think about what should happen next. Namely, what is needed to continue the regeneration of the area and how should that be taken forward? The result is, as we've heard, that a strategy group has been formed to discuss the changes the community would like to see and to drive forward the required development. Spire View Housing Association has already commissioned a consultation exercise about community facilities and this work will influence the strategy group which will no doubt want to carry out some wider consultation of its own before proceeding. However, it's fair to say that some ideas and themes are already beginning to emerge. The need for more shops, as Bob Doris rightly said, in the area has been mentioned, and there is general support for the idea of better community facilities. But this ongoing discussion will be informed by the consultation already set in train by Spire View. Ironically, for a community surrounded by a motorway, it can feel a little isolated, and better bus services and the reinstatement of the train line that once served the area have been suggested, and are areas where the Scottish Government might use its power and influence to bring about change and to help to link Royston to neighbouring communities. Mention has been made of the need to ensure the involvement of Glasgow City Council, and I very much agree with that, so much so that I wrote to the Council leader, Councillor Matheson, to ask him for the Council's cooperation. I'm pleased to be able to tell the Chamber presiding officer that he responded positively, saying, and I quote, I have instructed Council officers to work with the strategy group to help deliver these aims. I understand that there has already been dialogue between the strategy group and senior officers, and I hope that this will serve as a foundation upon which a suitable action plan can be constructed. I'm sure that Councillor Matheson's assurance of the Council's support will be very welcome. Presiding Officer, in drawing to a close, because time is limited to me, there are two brief points I want to make. The first is that in 2022, Royston can, if it chooses, commemorate the 80th anniversary of the controversial decision of 1942 that changed Garngard to Royston. Incidentally, an initiative, ironically, of the local headmaster and actually opposed by the local uh, councillors in the area. But to, my pe my, to people rather of my parents' and grandparents' generation, it has always remained and will always be the Garngad. So wouldn't it be appropriate to commemorate that change in the area's name with meaningful physical change, building on the excellent work of the many community organisations working so hard for the area? My second point, presiding officer, is this, that as the surrounding multi-storey flats are demolished at Ford Street and Rosemount Street and at Sight Hill and Red Road, the skyline of the north of the city is beginning to change. Royston will soon once again enjoy the prominent position in the cityscape that it had for most of its 500-year history. In so many ways, this is the perfect time to look to continue the regeneration of Royston and by working together, help to retain that sense of community that has always made Royston such a vibrant place in which to live and work. Thanks very much. Now call on James Dornan to be followed by Cameron McCannon. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to start off by congratulating Bob Doris and bringing this debate to the Chamber, uh, where he quite rightly recognises the work of committed local activists to making their area better, in this case the area of Royston. I'm sure the, the people in the gallery will excuse me if I concentrate on the importance of regeneration in my own constituency, but recognise the importance it has in areas such as Royston and across the city of Glasgow. Too often the unsung heroes of the local community are those who dedicate much of their spare time to make their community better. The aim of regeneration is to enable communities that have suffered from economic, social, environmental decline to rebuild their own community. 
And, as with Mr Doris, I have lots of examples in the area that I represent of community groups, housing associations and social enterprises that work together to make their local areas better. I have talked at length in the Chamber about the great work that housing associations such as Castleton and Arden Glen do in their local community. Castleton have five areas that they focus their activities on – employability, early intervention, health, social enterprise and community engagement. And these th threads can be seen through their current regeneration projects, including the Stables Nursery, which provides childcare and employment in the area, and their Craft Cafe, a brilliant social enterprise aiming to tackle social isolation amongst older people. The money made, and they make £8 for every pound invested, is reinvested back into the local community to assist them in helping more people. It's the sort of model that everyone in the Chamber will surely get behind. Arden Glen Housing Association also have a large body of regeneration projects ongoing, including their current highly Mr. ambitious Dornan, plans. Uh, Mr Dornan, I'm really sorry to be doing this, but I feel you must, uh, since the motion is quite specifically about Royston, um, well, and while the members in the... I'm not asking for a conversation, Mr Dornan. Uh, the members in the... The people in the gallery may indulge you uh, to hear about your constituency. I'm afraid I cannot. So if you want to confine your marks to Royston, I'm happy to hear them. But otherwise, perhaps you might want to leave your constituency matters to another day. Well, I'm quite happy to leave it at that, except for the fact that they, they, what I was trying to do was sell the benefits of regeneration, which would affect the people of Royce and every bit as much as it would of the people in my constituency. I'm happy to give way. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Sorry, Doris. Before he finishes, um, one of the reasons I, I was looking for other MSPs in Glasgow to speak was I'm looking for best practice for community regeneration to be shared across the city and beyond. I wonder, before Mr Dornan closes, if he could maybe draw in one example from his area that he would recommend to the people of Royston that we would use in taking forward regeneration of the Garngad. Given your plea, Mr Doris, I'm happy to indulge Mr Dornan in that regard, but if he could find his remarks to Royston in the generality, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Well, for the people of Royce, and if I had one example of what I think would be a very good idea, it would be those that are involved in the regeneration of the area to look at uh, training the regeneration staff in the evaluation model, social return on investment, which will be used to assess the impact of the regeneration work in the local community. The SROI measures social, environmental and economic changes and uses equivalent monetary values to represent them, which will allow them to determine a monetary worth as well as a social worth that comes from the testimony of the locals involved in the projects ahead. This will be a useful barometer going forward and in looking for additional funding to continue these projects. I am sure that, just as in my constituency, the people of Royston would benefit from such training for their staff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, can I call on Mr Buchanan, please, to be followed by Richard Lyle. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and my congratulations to Bob Doris for bringing forward this debate to the Scottish Parliament. Regeneration is obviously a hot topic at present, and on our local government committee we have heard a great deal of evidence of late on where regeneration has not had the desired effect. However, as I said at the recent committee debate on the subject, there are places where regeneration has had a lasting effect, such as Royston. And it is right that we draw attention to these successes, celebrate them, and, where necessary, share the valuable lessons learnt. I was particularly pleased to note from Dor Bob Doris's motion that there was an emphasis on the importance of local businesses, whose exclusion was a recurring theme in some other areas. It is sad, but so often where regeneration projects have failed, it is because they focus on, on attracting new businesses without proper regard and consideration to the local ones, which are already operating in the area, and the support or facilities required to help them grow. And from what I understand, the loss of local businesses from this area was, not, was at least one issue which motivated residents of Royston to take the lead, work with local groups, and work towards reversing these trends. And of course, that is the other important element to Royston's strategy. It's very much being led by local groups and the community. The importance of community engagement has cropped up again and again, so it is very encouraging that Royston community is at the centre of its regeneration strategy. And I think that's why the Inspire Royston initiative and the community festivals are also such a positive development. And we could all learn from this. Living in an area and that is being part of a community, living in an area and being part of a community are two very separate things. And for community council across, across Scotland, the real challenge is of very often encouraging people in the area to become involved, have their say, and get involved with the decisions that will affect them first and foremost. But this, I think, is an aspect we're getting better at. 
I was recently at a community council meeting in Morningside in Edinburgh, where there was a discussion about a coffee morning in a local community cafe, the sole purpose of which was to let the community know who their community council was and what they could do for them. Like Royston's festivals, this is a sort of proactive step that will make the difference and bring people together and get them involved locally, particularly those that might otherwise be excluded and find it difficult to interact and meet with their neighbours. It's great to see that Royston are starting at this young age with initiatives such as the Toon Speak Young People's Drama Group. Of course, as with all regeneration projects, there needs to be a tangible sign of success. We must always be sure that they're achieving value for money. There are indications that regeneration of Royston is going to have a lasting and positive imp impact, not least for the apprenticeships it has created, and moreover, these apprenticeships are going on to find, em to find employment. These apprentices are going on to find employment. It is important that these projects leave youngsters with a lasting skill which will open doors to them and give them employability. Certainly. Patricia Ferguson. I was reflecting on the member's comments, presiding officer, about the uh, need to include business in such discussions. But I'm also very conscious of the fact that often regeneration has to happen because business has departed, sometimes leaving devastation in its wake and sometimes worse, leaving contamination, which then has to be cleared up by others. I wonder if the member has any comments on that aspect. Mr Buchanan. Thank you. I think that's why I emphasise it's on supporting old businesses there and not just new ones. It's not just, the, it's not just getting new businesses up because the old ones then fail. And I think regeneration is partly restoring old businesses, restoring premises, morale and getting apprenticeships going. And that's really what I was trying to emphasise. It is together with that. The regeneration often carries images of large-scale infrastructure projects and huge amount of investment. However, these often fail due to a lack of community involvement. However, these time and again we see that regeneration is at its most effective and it often means a collection of small projects, each addressing a specific need or area where there is weakness. Bit by bit, they succeed in halting decline and begin to reverse it. This action is not always taken on behalf of the community, but very much led by the community itself. This, this would seem to be what is happening in Royston, and that's why I'm only delighted that we should celebrate its success in the Chamber, but also that we can actually learn from it. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. The call on Richard Lyle to be followed by Paul Martin. Uh, thank you, Presiding, Presiding Officer, and can I uh, also, the same as uh, uh, James Dornan, I'll, I'll cut out half my speech. <laughs> I would like to thank Bob Doris for uh, bringing this debate to the Chamber today, which welcomes the creation of the Royston Strategy Group, which already has been mentioned, uh, which includes several community groups, Blockern Housing Association, Copper Works Housing Cooperative, Rosemount Development Trust, Royston Corridor Homes, Royston Youth Action, Inspire View Housing Association, who will all collaborate on the completion of and the uh, regeneration of the Royston area. Although I am not a, a Glasgow MSP presiding officer, I know this area well, as I used to work in this area for a number of years. Further improvement in the area, I am sure, will be welcomed by the exceptionally good people of Royston, some who are in the gallery today, and I certainly welcome, to their, welcome them to their parliament this afternoon. This parliament should indeed recognise the good work being carried out in the Royston area by the local community groups and associations to regenerate the local area. And the, the point that Cameron uh, uh, made, uh, Buchanan made earlier is the point that it is community groups who, getting together, can do something for their area, who can work. And I have previous experience of that locally in my area, but I won't get into it because, because you've uh, ruled on that. But I think the work they're doing does need to be recognised. So, it can help to inspire other areas and show them what can be done when a community is united in improving their area by creating an environment which is attractive to business. And the point that Patricia Ferguson made earlier, businesses have to be encouraged to stay here, have to be encouraged to come back and, and the vibrancy of them. And this afternoon, I actually had a, a meeting with the, the Scottish Grocery Federation, and that was the point. Local business... Uh, uh, little shops, they are the heart of the community. They are the people. We don't need all these uh, other shops, and most of the time it's bookies, bookie offices, um, your bookmakers. I think it has to be something which, a plan that people can get behind, something that's attractive, something which can help business grow and also bring and reduce employment uh, and uh, continue to reduce the employment rate in Royston. Uh, in a previous life, life, I was involved in a regeneration area, and 
Basically, it was a situation that all the community groups got together, came to the council, came to the MSP or, or MP, and promoted what they'd done. And the work that these people do is amazing. And they do it unpaid. They do it for their area. They do it for the, the people. They do it for their children. And that's the point that really we should be getting behind to help people who are doing this. And, and this is why I think that this debate today is... Uh, really something which we can uh, support. We have to work with local people, local councillors, local politicians. And I, I take the point Patricia Ferguson made earlier that the, the leader of Glasgow City Council has uh, given his backing, uh, and I, I compliment her on that. And basically, I think that the council should listen to local people and help MSPs and councillors in order to get get the, the, the situation correct. The character of an area must be maintained. We must use all the tools at our disposal to make sure this is done for the benefit of all. We are listening to the local community. That's the main thing. Listen to the local community and adapt the regeneration policy to their needs and their requirements. What has been done and what is been going to be done in Royston is commendable and I support, should be supported by all, all politicians whatever political party, political per persuasion. And I compliment uh, Bob Doris uh, in bringing this uh, debate, and I compliment him in his work, along with Patricia Ferguson, I know it's her, her area, to help to ensure that all organisations involved are given the opportunity to do what they can to, to provide and improve the area. I'm pleased that this debate has been held, so that individuals who have given up their valuable time, people sitting up in that gallery, who are... Uh, really exceptional for the benefit of others can be recognised and rightly so. And I hope this debate will lend the credence to call to Glasgow City Council as uh, Patricia Ferguson has said that the council leader has given to implement the suggestions of the Royston Strategy Group to deliver a fit and la less than la uh, legacy for Royston. And I wish all involved success in their venture. Many thanks. I now call on Paul Martin, after which we'll move to the Minister for the closing speech. Uh, thank you, President Officer. And can I, uh, with great pleasure, confine my remarks to the, the motion and indeed support the motion in Bob Doris's name? I can make your job much easier by the very fact that I was the former uh, MSP for uh, Glasgow Springburn, which included the area of Royston, and indeed I was elected as a councillor uh, in respect to the area of Royston in December the 16th, 1993. So I've been delighted during that, uh, those years to have been a uh, local representative, and I can. Uh, amplify uh, many of the points that have been made by both Doris, Bob Doris and Patricia Ferguson in respect to the good work of the local activists uh, in uh, that area in Royston. Uh, I can speak in particular of uh, Charlie Lunn, Tilly McElroy and Jackie Kerr, uh, three of them who have led uh, the regeneration process of ensuring that local people get access to good quality housing. Uh, and I think the very fact that we've seen the success in Royston the volumes that speak for that is the fact that the process during those years was in fact genuinely community-led. And can I say in respect of the individuals I've already referred to, they ensured that that process uh, was community-led and I speak volumes in respect, and I say it in a very uh, respective way, uh, that those individuals ensured that the community had their say uh, during those years, and in particular in respect of uh, from the mid-1990s uh, and indeed up until uh, 2005 and 2006 in particular, we've seen a number of significant investments during those periods that I think made a significant difference to the area that I would refer to as the Garmgad uh, in particular. And I was conditioned uh, during those years as an elected representative to say, yes, this is uh, the Garmgad. And indeed, I do welcome uh, Patricia Ferguson's uh, reference to the fact that we can take that issue forward in uh, 2022. Can I say, in respect to the Rosemount uh, Development Trust, the challenge that faced uh, the Rosemount Development Trust uh, those years gone back uh, was dealing with the challenge that Bob Doris referred to in respect of the unacceptable employment statistic that faced us. The fact that 23%, as it was at that stage, 23% uh, of the local population was unemployed. And the Rosemount Development Trust wanted to ensure the local opportunities for, for development and in respect of unemployment. Challenging that unemployment statistic was a priority for them, hence the reason why they developed the Rosemount Workspace, uh, which, as we speak, is employing over 300 people on that site. 
I think that investment is welcome, President Officer. As other members have said, it is important that we continue to develop that process to challenge those unacceptable health statistics. But the other challenge that faces us uh, and the Garn Gad and indeed, as Royston has referred to in the motion, is, the, is dealing with some of the challenges that we face in respect of educational attainment. Uh, and I was delighted to be there when we led the campaign to ensure that St Rock's Secondary School was retained uh, and indeed that we retained St Rock's Primary School uh, in the Garn Gad area. I think ensuring that local youngsters have the genuine opportunities to improve their educational attainment is absolutely crucial uh, in the Garn Gad area. And anything that we can do in this parliament to ensure that action is taken uh, in that respect is extremely important. Can I just say, in conclusion, uh, once again, this is a good example of local activists ensuring, with the professional support that they've received uh, from the officers involved in the local area, that they've actually genuinely made a difference. I think we should learn from these lessons. And in fact, looking not that far away, as Patricia Ferguson referred to, the multi-stories that we're demolishing currently at the moment, we need to learn from uh, the negative examples of that dem those demolitions that are taking place and learn from the positive examples that have been set out uh, in the Garn Gad area of Glasgow. Thank you very much. For us. Thank you very much. Now I call on Minister Margaret Burgess to make a closing speech, please. Seven minutes or thereby, please, Minister. Okay, thank you, Presiding Officer. Like others, I am grateful to Bob Doris for highlighting the creation of the Royston Strategy Group and the positive work that local groups have undertaken for the benefits of the people living in the Royston area of Glasgow. And it's right that this Parliament takes every opportunity to commend local initiatives which aim to make a real difference to the people of life, the people living in the and working in the local communities. And tackling poverty is a key priority of this government. And I think both Bob Doris and um, Paul Martin talked about the poverty in the Royston area. And our focus continues to be maintaining and improving well-being for everyone living in Scotland. And a community-led approach ensures we tackle this at grassroots level. The Scottish Government's regeneration strategy, achieving a sustainable future, makes clear our, our continued commitment to community-led regeneration. We recognise the role that community organisations and the people within them can play to bringing about sustainable change, and that is why the community-led approach is so important. The creation of the Royston Strategy Group brings together passionate and active members of the local community, and I think all members have commended them for that. And these members have come together with the aim of improving the lives of everyone living in their community, and I think that's a fitting example of our regeneration vision. While a community-led approach is key, an asset-based mindset is also important. Although understanding where additional support needs exist, it's important our collective focus should be in the assets communities such as Royston have, rather than the, than the deficits, deficits of an area. To support communities to be sustainable, we must identify th those assets, economic, physical and social, and use them to deliver sustainable, positive change. With this in mind, we should always ask what makes this place good? Where do the opportunities lie and what expertise and skills do local people have rather than just labouring particular areas or groups of people? The members of the Royston Strategy Group are made up of locally based community anchor organisations that value the people who live in the Royston area. These organisations are already working together to look at, for example, improving housing, employment opportunities and social cohesion. Royston Strategy Group's purpose is to look at ways to further enhance the Royston community. All parties involved and partners are enthusiastic about the feasibility study that is underway, which will look at potential demand for a new community facility. And through the Inspire Royston Group, the local community has also decided it is fitting to celebrate 25 years of three of the most well-established organisations in the area, Royston Youth Action, Spireview Housing Association and Rosemount Development Trust. These celebrations began in April with one of a number of community events and will continue until September this year. Events such as these further highlight the valuable impact of the work of volunteers 
and there is no better example of an asset to a community than the people themselves. And it's encouraging to hear that the turnout for these events so far has been fantastic and the local community are fully involved and supportive of all that's being achieved in their area. The Scottish Government Community Empowerment Bill will support communities like Royston to achieve their own goals and aspirations by taking independent action and by having their voices heard in the decisions that affect their area. Similarly, the Scottish Government's People and Communities Fund supports over 150 projects across Scotland. It's an encouraging that, to see that Spire View Housing Association and Royston Youth Action, two members of the new Royston Strategy Group, are already benefiting from this fund as they continue to deliver regeneration projects in their local communities. And the Scottish Government will continue to support community-led regeneration. And I'm delighted to say that we've committed a further two years of funding for the People and Communities Fund in 2015-16, and will shortly announce a date for reopening the fund. And this will ensure that community-led projects can continue to be supported right through to 2016. The newly created Royston Strategy Group also consists of a number of community-based housing associations, Blochairn Housing Association, Copper, Copper Works Housing Cooperative, Royston Corridor Homes and Spireview Housing Association. And I think it's clear that we recognise absolutely, and as Minister for Housing, I absolutely recognise uh, the value of community-controlled housing associations. They know what the issues are and the needs of their community. And meaningful re regeneration is more than just bricks and mortar. Good quality affordable housing is important to re regenerate communities, but we must also tackle the social and economic issues that are preventing communities from growing and flourishing. And I think it was mentioned by a number of speakers and, and James Dornan. It's right that we exchange this uh, across different areas in Glasgow. We can all learn and benefit and share good practice where something is happening in an area. We can all learn from that and spread it out. And that's something I certainly would like to see. But I very recently had the pleasure of visiting Royston Youth Action. And I met the local volunteers and beneficiaries of the service. And I was absolutely impressed by their commitment, but also their pride, the pride in their community and the pride in what they'd achieved for their community. And that's what struck me most. Uh, I had a very pleasant time in Royston, uh, seeing the garden, talking to people, uh, young people, people that had been involved in their community for a long period uh, and who continued to be involved in it. I also visited the Rainbow Hall, where it was the start of, of one of the celebrations, um, and it looked absolutely terrific, and you could just get the atmosphere. I could see it building up to what I'm sure was an absolutely superb uh, afternoon. And it was very clear to me that what you have in Royston is a very cohesive community, a community that has clearly worked together for, for many years, all the organisations working together. Uh, and I, I hope that they continue to do that because I was absolutely impressed and very impressed with the, the youth um, action group, which as somebody I think a speaker already mentioned, um, it spread from a variety of ages involved in it. And that was one of the things that was really good about it. There was no demarcation lines. Everybody was part of it. And that, to me, is what um, community-led regeneration uh, is all about. So I, I'll just uh, finish at this point. But again, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, the new Royston Strategy Group, the Inspire Royston Programme, because they are fitting examples of community-led regeneration for the work they're planning and the work that has already been done and that they undertake on behalf of the local community. And I wish them every success in the future. Many thanks. And I now close this meeting of Parliament. Thank you all. <laughs>